Joyce, uh, what was one of the more difficult aspects of uh, writing this memoir? Oh, Dave, you know, it took me a long time to get this memoir going. I, I thought a year after my mom died I'd, I'd start writing it, and I thought, oh, I, I'm just not ready to do that. And it took me about 10 years before I finally started writing, and I realized that it wasn't just my sorrow about my mom's um, death, but I had some really big regrets that I were clinging, hanging on to me. And I didn't want to have to look at those, but I realized after I finished the memoir that that actually paying attention to those regrets, being with them is what really was healing for me. I feel so differently now than I did when I started writing that memoir. And you know, my regrets weren't like enormous ones, but they were significant for me. Uh, one of them that was I just regretted not spending more time with my mother. And I went, I always thought, I, I mean, I think I was a good daughter, and I lived a seven-hour round trip from my mother, so I went once a, a month, I'd go for a weekend, and I love being with her, but all the time I'm there, you know, I'm thinking, oh, my work, I'm taking this time, i got to drive back and forth, and, and my mother was never, she never put a guilt trip on me, like saying, oh, I wish you were here more, but she'd always say, I just love having you here, that kind of thing. And after mom died, I thought, you know, I so wish I would have taken an extra day, maybe gone again, you know, during the month. Um, that was just, that was a regret I really had to, had to let go of and say, you know, I did the best I could at the time, and it was okay. Another regret I have, I had, was not understanding what it's like to be a really active person and then become fatigued and be unable to be independent anymore, and specific kinds of things. I was with my siblings one evening, and we had a dinner together, and my mother was there. And she had had, I think, her second heart attack by that time. And so I was, we were around the table, and we were all chiding her about going to cardiac rehab and doing exercises. And we all kept at her about, you know, you should be doing this. It would be really good for you. And then I took her home that night, and as we walked into her condo, and I saw how exhausted she was and how she could barely get into her bed. And I, I, even then, I just felt so terrible. I thought, we don't get it at all, what it's like for her. Uh, that, and I also regret that I didn't understand what loneliness is like for older people. Uh, especially when they become widowed or, um, or are living alone. But really, loneliness is, um, I think it just plagues them. The last four years of my mother's life, she kept saying to me many times, you know, all my friends are gone. Mm -hmm. And it was her way of saying, you know, I, I'm really lonely. I, the people who knew my culture, my era, my history, none of them are there anymore. And, you know, I have people around that love me, but it's, it's just not quite the same. And I, I regret that I, I didn't understand that. And that's one of the reasons I really wanted to write this book, is to, to help people younger than I am, to hopefully accompany older people in a way that they're more understanding and more empathic. So I'm going to uh, read a little something from uh, the chapter. It's called A Book of Regrets. I asked a friend of mine one time if she had any regrets when a real close uh, person in her life died, and she turned to me and she said, oh, I was a book of regrets. So that kind of eased me in that I wasn't too strange in having all my own regrets. So this is what I wrote in the last section. As I tended to my regrets, I came to understand the need to free myself from the pain they caused me so that I could cradle the beautiful joy in the memories I had of my mother. While the past cannot be undone, I can grow from it. My regrets have motivated me to change my ways. I now make an effort to put people and relationships before work and productivity. I'm more attentive to what an older person experiences. I listen closely when they voice fear and concern. I also remember to gather from the past the good that takes place among the not-so-good. I've discovered that the good things almost always outweigh the scarcity of them. And perhaps most significant of all, I've learned how to forgive myself.